the hotter it gets, the more I think about water. <laughs> the water of the word, they say, is uh, nourishment for the soul and sustenance for the spirit. On a hot day, <laughs> water is just good. That's all there is to it. Oh, Gatorade may be better and some of the other products we make for replacing fluids. But God knows what we have need of. And He can provide. For me, it's just water. Streams in the desert has always been a favorite of mine in the sense that one, it was easy to find in a used bookstore. <laughs> and two, God always spoke to me through it. You know, that brings me to a point about devotionals is that, you know, how I picked devotionals and how I chose them originally in my life was, I was poor, you know, hippie child. I didn't have the opportunity to pick and choose from a wide selection in a Christian bookstore of thousands of devotionals that were designed like designer jeans for or customized for the businessman, the businesswoman, the man, the woman, the child, or whatever it may be. I just was looking for a devotional. So what I did was that I said, Lord, you know, I don't have a lot of money and I can't afford to buy brand new so god you're gonna have to show me the one that you want me to have so that i could hear from you and you know he did god honors us in our simplicity and in our sincerity he meets us and he chose to honor my prayer and gave me as my first one streets in the desert now you don't have to have more than one devotional you can read your bible and be a devotional you can be inspired and have a devotional it can be a bird singing to you and be a devotional. But in any devotion, it should be to God, and you should see Jesus in it. So there should be a time of Bible reading and Bible study. There should be a time of going to church and prayer. But there should also be a time that you can just enjoy and be a part of a devotional. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. Romans 8.28. How wide is this assertion of the Apostle Paul? He does not say we know that some things. He doesn't say we know most things. And he doesn't say that we know joyous things. But he says all things. From the minutest to the most momentous, from the humblest event in daily providence to the greatest hours in grace. And all things work. They are working, not all things have worked or shall work, but it is a present operation, an ongoing thing. At this very moment, when some voice may be saying, thy judgments are a great deep, the angels above who are watching the development of the great plan are with folded wings exclaiming, the Lord is righteous in all his ways and holy in all his works. Psalm 145, 17. And then all things work together. It is a beautiful blending. Many different colors, in themselves raw and unsightly, are required in order to weave a harmonious pattern. Many separate tones and notes of music, even discords and dissonances, are required to make up the harmonious anthem. Many separate wheels and joints are required to make the piece of machinery. Take a thread separately, or a note separately, or a wheel or a tooth of a wheel separately, and there may be neither use nor beauty discernible. It's missing. But complete the web, combine the notes, put together the separate parts of steel and iron, and you see how perfect and symmetrical is the result. Here is a lesson for faith. What I do thou knowest not now, but thou shalt know hereafter. In 1,000 trials, it is not 500 of them that work for the believer's good, but 999 of them and one beside. And a poem is described here. God meant it unto good, from Genesis 50:20. God meant it unto good, O blessed assurance. 
falling like sunshine all across life's way, touching with heaven's gold earth's clouds, bringing fresh peace and comfort day by day. Twas not by chance the hands of faithless brethren sold Joseph captive to a foreign land, nor was it chance which after years of suffering brought him before the monarch's throne to stand. One eye all-seeing saw the need of thousands and planned to meet it through the one lone soul, and through the weary days of prison bondage was working towards the great and glorious goal. As yet the end was hidden from the captive, the iron entered into his soul, his eye could scan the present path of sorrow. Not yet his graze, his not yet his gaze might rest upon the whole. Faith failed not through these long dead. Time for a coffee break. <laughs> Faith failed not through these long dark days of waiting. His trust in God was recompensed at last. The moment came when God led forth his servant to succor many all his sufferings past. It was not you but God that sent me hither, witness triumph faith in after days. God meant it unto good, no second causes, mingled their discord with his song of praise. God means it unto good for thee, beloved. The God of Joseph is the same today. His love permits affliction strange and bitter. His hand is guiding through the unknown way. Thy Lord who sees the end from the beginning, hath purpose for thee of love untold, then place thy hand in his and follow fearless till thou reachest the riches of his grace behold there when thou standest in the home of glory and all life's pass open to thy gaze thine eye shall see the hand which thou trustest and magnify his love to endless days sometimes those poems <laughs> and i'm a poet get a little bit winded just like i do at times but in all of those things, we know that God works together for good. Working out in every detail, in all these things, combined together for good, for you, for me, for those around us, for people we haven't seen yet and haven't met, for the time and the place where God calls us to be as we each and every day of our lives are living out our normal everyday existence. All around you is his plan unfolding and his work being done. And most people think that it's the obvious things that seem so innocuous or unnoticed that are the ones that God is most interested in. God is most interested in you because he says that it's all of it, not some of it. And it's all working together for good for you and for me. And for every single person that God says it to. Because with so great a God who is able to create the universe, he is able to plan out the circumstances of life because he already knows what happens. And he's able to have and to see and to arrange those things that fit perfectly in your day today. Streams in the Desert remind you that it's all working together for good but it's God who's doing it for you, in you, and with you. God bless you.